we all know that the planet Earth supports a rich diversity of living organisms, be that animals, plants, or microbes. The plants being producers are important because they provide us precious economic goods and ecological services. The different kinds of plants that inhabit our planet Earth have been classified into the taxonomic categories called families. Of these various families, Brassicaceae, which is the topic for today's lecture, is an important family. In this lecture, we will be dealing with the following aspects of the family Brassicaceae. Number one, taxonomy. Number second, systematic position. Number third, phylogeny. Fourth, diversity. And the last and fifth, economic importance of the family Brassicaceae. So, starting with this taxonomy. The Brassicaceae is commonly known as mustard family, or sometimes we call it as crucifer family. The term crucifer, it means cross form. This cross form is basically in relation to the cross-shaped corolla that is existing in the flowers of this family. The family Brassicaceae was first of all established as a formal taxonomy category under the name Cruciferi by A. L. D. Jisu. Later on, this Cruciferi name was also retained, but at the same time, Brassicaceae name was given to this family Cruciferi. Why? because it was necessitated due to the rule of ICBN. ICBN stands for International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. The rule is called as typification. But at the same time, the name Cruciferi was also retained. In taxonomy, we call this retention of the name as Nomen Conservandum. Why this was retained? Because the name Cruciferi was in wide usage. The family members of this Brassicaceae family, they are distinctive. They show some unique characters which are not existing in other types of plants. These characters are that they are mostly herbs. Very rarely they can be shrubs. They contain a type of phytochemical what we call as glucosinolates or commonly known as mustard oils. Here the flower have a perianth that is the known reproductive part of the flower. The perianth is here cruciate. Cruciate means cross-shaped. And the petals, petals are the individual parts of the corolla. They are here clad. The androsium in this family is tetradynamous, a unique characteristic feature of the family Brassicaceae. Then gynosium, it has a superior bicorporary syncorpus ovary. And this ovary shows an exile or parietal placentation. Here, the fruit is unique in this flower in the sense it's called as silicua or silicule. This fruit is basically a two valved dehiscent fruit with a partition called as replum. Now we will discuss its various taxonomic features, morphological features, one by one, starting with its habit, how it looks like. The various plants that belong to the family Brassicaceae, they can be either annual. They can be biennial or can be perennial herbs. But very rarely, some of the members, they are shrubs, as exemplified by a genus called as Forsythia. The perennial herbs in the family, they are often associated with rhizomes, stolons, or runners. The root here, because this family belongs to the dicots, the root system is called as tap root system. The stem is hairy, but it's associated with a watery sap. The hairs, they are diverse in their shape. They can be simple to branched. When they are branched, they can assume the shapes like satellite. Satellite means the star shaped or peltate. The leaves in the members of the family Brassicaceae, they are alternatively arranged. But that alternate arrangement is in a spiral fashion. But sometimes, Quite often, we see the leaves, they form a basal rosette at underground part. 
the leaves or without a stipule here that's why it's extubulate the leaves are simple very rarely they can be pomately or pinnately compound when simple this leaf blade is often dissected that means its margins they are dissected and the dissection can sometimes take the shape of lobes rarely we see margins they show an entire shape but usually they are serrate in their margins the veneation that is the veins in the leaf surface they can assume the shape of pomade or pinnate the inflorescence can be terminal or it can be axillary but in both the cases it is raceme inflorescence can be rarely com composed of a single solitary flower but most often a characteristic feature of this family is the racemes they often form a flat topped corymbs the flower individual flower is here pedicellar that means they are with stalks they are abracitiate but rarely they can be bracketiate as we have an example of nostrum of snail where we have the brackets associated with the flower but mostly they are without brackets again they are abracitiate now the flowers they are mostly bisexual and usually they are actinomorphic very rarely there can be instances of flowers having a zygomorphic symmetry the flowers are hypogynous or very rarely perigynous the flower receptacle that is the stalk of the flower it can sometimes prolong and form an elongate or shortened structure called as gynophore now the individual parts of the flower one by one starting from calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium first of all the calyx calyx here is comprised of four sepals that means the flower is tetramerous aposepals all these sepals they are free they are arranged in two whorls in a 2 plus 2 arrangement the outer sepal whorl that is decussate and is often hairy at its base the sepals of the lateral pair they sometimes are saccate at base saccate means they have a pouch like structure they can be green or slightly petaloid now the corolla is again comprised of four petals it's apopetalous that means free petals a characteristic feature it is cruciform that means arranged in a cross shape these petals they are often with an elongate claw at its base and a spreading limb sometimes in some of the species we see these petals are absent as we see in the case of corodopus now the androecium that is the male part of the flower androecium in the case of brassicaceae we often see it co it's comprised of six stamens but rarely we also see in some cases two stamens in the case of coronops four stamens in the case of cordamine and even 16 stamens in the case of megacarpia these stamens they are apostemonous they are biseriate and as already mentioned they are arranged in a tetradynamous fashion what this basically this tetradynamous arrangement means here in this case of uh, brassicaceae we have the two outer sh shorter stamens and the inner four longer stamens that's why it's called as 2 plus 4 arrangement the filaments they are elongate to short or sometimes they can be free or fused the anthers at the top of these stamens they are base fixed they are introse and the dehiscence is longitudinal the anthers are also tetra supporangiate the pollen grains in the case of brassicaceae they are tricolporate or tricolpate again a characteristic feature of brassicaceae here is the nectaries they are often present near the base of the stamens now the female part of the flower that is gynoecium is comprised of corpels these corpels usually are in two number but rarely we see in some cases but this is a very rare instance we see three corpels or four corpels also present the gynoecium is syncorpus that means all these corpels they are fused together the ovary is here superior it is unilocular but a unique thing about this brassicaceae ovary is that although it is a unilocular but it seems a bilocular how 
because there we have a false septum. What this false septum is? It's basically a thin partition which lacks vascular tissue. This false septum, it is surrounded by a thick placental rim called as replum. In this ovary, the ovules are either one or many. The ovules are anatropous or campylotropous. Now, the second part of the gynosium, that is the style, it is present either singly or sometimes it can be even absent. The stigma at the top of the corpus or in capitate shape, but very often we see it's a bilobed stigma. The placentation here in the case of brassicaceae, it is exile parietal. What is this type of placentation here? Each corpus has two rows of ovules and where they are attached to the placenta. The nectaries here are very discreet or they can be in the form of a ring which are around stamens or corpus. Now the fruit, fruit is here either silicua or silicule. What is the difference between silicule and silicule? In the case of silicule, it is longer than broad. But in the case of silicule, it is opposite. It is broader than it is long. In the both the cases of silicule or silicule, the two halves of the fruit, they split away from a persistent partition. As already mentioned, it is called as replum. That is present at the rim of the placenta. And to this rim are attached the seeds. In the case of raffinus, we see another form of a fruit, what is called as lomentum. Inside the fruit, we have the seeds, but these seeds, they lack endosperm. That's why we call the seeds here as X albuminous. Occasionally, these seeds are arillate. Inside the seeds, we have the embryo. A characteristic feature of breast case is these embryos are either curved or folded. The flowers of brassicaceae, they are frequently white, white in their color, or they can be yellow or pale to deep purple. That's why they are often pollinated by insects like bees, flies, butterflies, moths, beetles, for which the main attraction is the nectar in the flowers. some tropical species, pollination also occurs by birds or bats. In most cases, the valves of the silicua, that is the silicua is the fruit in the brassicaceae, it falls away, thus exposing the seeds to the action of either wind or dispersal by rain wash. In some other cases, the small seeds as we see in cardamine, they are explosively released from the silicules. In raffinus, that's another genre in the family Brassicaceae, the cocky fruits, they break transversely into one seeded segments, which are then scattered either by wind or by water. Here in the case of Brassicaceae, we also see the seeds, they have adaptations. These adaptations are like wings, bladders, or the seeds can be dusty. All these adaptations, they facilitate dispersal of the seeds by wind. In some cases, we have the fruits, they are fleshy one. That adaptation mainly aids in its dispersal by either mammals or by birds. We will just highlight few prominent classification systems. Bentham and Hooker, the two British botanists, they classified the family Brassicaceae under Dicotyledons and the subclass Polypetaly and the series Thalamiflori. Then an American taxonomist, Cronkist, he classified this family Brassicaceae under Diogen Magnoliophyta, class Magnoliopsida, subclass Dillinidae, order Kappa Rails. This was followed by Takhtajan, a Russian taxonomist who classified this Brassicaceae family same as Conquest under Dugen Magnoliophyta, class Magnoliopsida, 
subclass Delenidae, but he included one more superorder called as Violini and the order Kappa Rex. Dahl Green, a Danish botanist, classified this family under the class. He doesn't recognize the division. He straight away ranked it at the rank of class Liliopsida, subclass Magnolidae, superorder Violini, and the order Kappa Rex. Robert Thorne, very recently in the year 2003, he classified it under the class Angiosperm, subclass Rosidae, superorder Brassicani, and the order Brassicales. Angiosperm phylogeny group, a collaborative group of taxonomists who have classified a rankless classification, they associate this family Brassicaceae with U dicots. U here means the true dicots and the subclade Eurozides second and the order Brassicates. The family Brassicaceae is considered to be monophyletic. It has a monophyletic origin. The basis for this assumption is that all the members of the Brassicaceae have elongate gynophores exerted stamens, glucosinolates, the phytochemical that we have in the case of Brassicaceae. In the case of their endoplasmic reticulum, they have their cisterni, they are dilated ones. And lastly, the molecular data based on the gene RBCL. RBCL is the larger subunit of Rubisco protein. Brassicaceae is the largest family of the order Brassicales. In addition to Brassicaceae, the order includes 15 more families. The presence of phytochemical glucosinolate and also the myrosin cells is considered to be synapomorphic for the order Brassicates. The phylogenetic relationship within the order have been investigated by the cladistic analysis, both by taking into account the morphological characters as well as molecular characters. The family Brassicaceae, it forms a distinct subclade in addition to the rest of the 15 families this family Brassicaceae, it forms a distinct subclade based on following characters like tetramerous flower, seeds with curved or folded embryos, lack of endosperm, vessels with vestured pits, and the cisterni of the endoplasmic reticulum which are vacuolar. Both morphological and molecular data suggest that the subfamily within this family Brassicaceae that is called as Caparoidae, represented by Caparis, it forms a basal but a paraphyletic complex within the family Brassicaceae. On the other hand, we have two more subfamilies, namely Kilimoidae, represented by Kilium, and the common Brassicoidae, which form also form a monophyletic group. The basis for this monophyly is the synapomorphies, like both these subfamilies, they have a herbaceous habit, and also in their fruit, they have a false septum called replum, and more recently on the basis of molecular DNA sequence data. The monophyly of Clemoidae is supported by they have palmately compound leaves and bilaterally symmetrical flowers. On the other hand, the monophyly of the subfamily Brassicoidae is indicated by the presence of a false septum called replum in their ovary, and also one more character that is the folded embryos. The Brassicoidae, the most common subfamily within the family Brassicaceae, it differs from the Kilimoidae in it, in it being strongly having reticulate and colpate pollen grains. Most of the Brassicoidae, they have short gynophores and tetradynamous stamens. These tetradynamous stamens have short filaments. The Brassicoidae, which is the common subfamily within the family Brassicaceae, it is predominant in temperate regions. On the other hand, the rest of the two subfamilies, Kilimoidae and Caparoidae, they are common in tropical regions. The genera of Brassicoidae are very difficult to distinguish, and that's why they have been delimited into different tribes. This tribal delimitation is mainly based on characters like fruit morphology, calyx estuation, flower color, stigma form, number of seeds per locule, type of embryo folding, and the endowment.
present, the family is represented world over by about 350 genera. These 350 genera, they include more than 4,000 species. Some of the species rich genera in this family are Draba, having a species richness of about 350 species all over the world. This is followed by Erisimum by 180 species. Then Cardamine and Lepidium, two different genera. Each of these genera, they have 170 species each. Then Elysum having 150 species, followed by Sisambrium having about 90 species throughout the world. Then followed by Arabis, Thalaspi, Rodipa, Hesperis, and Heliophila, each of these having 70 species each. And lastly, the type genus Brassica having 50 species all over the world. Members of this family Brassicaceae, they show a worldwide distribution. Throughout the world, we see the species belong to the family Brassicaceae, but they show most diversity in the Mediterranean region. In fact, this Mediterranean region is considered to be the center of diversity for Brassicaceae. In addition to this region, we also see diversity of Brassicaceae in the regions like Southwestern and Central Asia, and also in Western North America. Many of these species of Brassicaceae, they are very important in ecology of various biological communities. That is why we see the Brassicaceae species in the early successional communities. The members of the family Brassicaceae, they are of huge economic importance. Being, reason being, the family contains many important vegetable crops that we consume in our daily lives. Some of these vegetable crops are the edible plants like, I will mention their English name and their botanical names. Cabbage, its scientific botanical name is Brassica oleracea variety capitata. Cauliflower, its scientific name is Brassica oleracea variety botrytis. Then turnip, its scientific name is Brassica rapa. Radish, scientific name Brafinus stevis. Many members of this Brassicaceae, they are also a source of condiment, such as Chinese mustard, namely Brassica juncia, black mustard, scientific name Brassica nigra, white mustard, Synapse alba, horseradish, Aromerica rustanica. In addition to these vegetable crops, this Brassicaceae is important being the source of seed oil. We know vegetable oil is extracted from the seeds of several species of Brassica. Chiefly, Brassica napus, our common rapeseed oil. The family contains many species that are commonly used as ornamentals, such as spider flower, its scientific name is Kilium, Dames violet, Hesperus, wallflower, our common plant that we grow in our parks and gardens, wallflower. Its scientific name is Erisimum. Or most common one is the candy tuft. Scientific name Iberis. Or the amazing name like money plant called as Lunaria. Sweet Lysum called Lubularia. Or the rock cress, what we grow in our rockeries called as Arabis. Many of the species of Brassicaceae, they have also some negative impacts, like they are noxious weeds. We know about garlic mustard, which has invaded many parts in Northwestern America. Its scientific name is Alaria. Then Capsilla, Shepherd's Purse, which is a common weed of our agricultural lands, road sites, and other disturbed sites. Then pepper grass, Lepidium, it's also quite common and noxious weed everywhere in the world. Some of the species of Brassicaceae, they are a source of natural dye. As we know, the case of blue dye, it was extracted from the leaves of Isotis tinctoria. One more important 
aspect economic importance rather scientific importance of brassicaceae is that it has given us a plant a model plant by the name of Arabidopsis thaliana its english name is mouse ear cress it is basically a eurasian weed but it is most widely used in the plant molecular biology as we know the case of drosophila fruit fly which has been used in the cytogenetic studies it has given many principles many insights in the genetics but in the case of plants this arabidopsis thaliana is called as sometimes drosophila of plant kingdom because of its wide usage in plant molecular biology 